My name is Aaron Rosenswag. I live on 1 Thorburn Road. Gaithersburg is a wonderful place to live because of your efforts. The service is top notch, as you can see where the city lines end when the snow days come. Also, we hold the annual agricultural fair that brings so much fun and education to many people. We can see our city, county, and state tries very hard to preserve farming culture. The Maryland Agricultural Land Preservation Program is one of the most successful programs of its kind in the nation. Maryland has preserved in perpetuity more agricultural land than any other state in the country. When we are building houses, buildings, roads, we strive to keep a balance with Mother Nature. Still, we push animals out of our daily life. We complain about animals that bring inconvenience. However, animals have no way to voice complaints about humanity's destruction of their natural life. If we keep pushing animals out of our daily life, sooner or later, human beings will be all alone on Earth. Imagine if every city, county, and state bans the rooster. If we destroyed all roosters, within a very short time, the chicken family would become extinct, and the familiar American breakfast of bacon and eggs would be no more. That said, a chicken is not a farm animal. It is a bird, not unlike an African gray parrot. There's nothing preventing the chicken from being a perfect companion animal in the city. In 2010, we enacted a preemptive law to ban roosters. The ban would prevent noise complaints while protecting hens in our city for years to come. Unfortunately, ideas that sound good on paper don't always turn out well in practice. Animal control is caught in the middle. The new law forces them to confiscate any animal that remotely looks like a rooster. As the laws are written, they must do this even if there has not been a single issue with crowing. This law does not protect hens in our city. It makes them a target. Please grant my family a special permit to have roosters. Consider it a trial to test whether or not my claims are true. Please trust that I will not pollute our city with noise. If I obtain a rooster, and if it makes unreasonable noise, we will deal swiftly with the issue. The last thing I want to do is cause trouble for my neighbors. I've presented 12 signatures from neighbors stating that they miss our birds. I've presented four signatures from my direct next door neighbors stating that they never heard any noise. We have always been responsible. If granted a permit, if all goes well, when it expires, we can either extend the permit or consider opening it up to public hearing at a more appropriate time. Thank you. Thank you. And as you know, we're, we're, we will be uh, discussing this later in the agenda. Thanks. Uh -huh. Wait, are there any other speakers tonight? Next, we are inviting Lisa Holland to the podium to talk about roosters. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. We are revisiting the chicken issue. Uh, as you are aware, roosters were banned uh, back in 2010, uh, basically because of the crowing noise that uh, affected citizens. When you do have a crowing rooster, you, you do know immediately, staff knows immediately, we get several complaints uh, on the location of the rooster. Um, I did a lot of research on anti-crowing methods and old wise tales and devices. And um, <clears throat> I found there are two known methods currently of deterring a rooster from crowing. One, of course, is the anti-crowing collar, which fits around the rooster's neck. It's made of Velcro. Uh, there is some netting in it. You can order different sizes. You can uh, adjust the, the, the collar itself on the rooster. Um, the other method is surgical muting of the rooster. Uh, it's not a simple procedure. Um, it, it involves um, going, the basically destroying or putting holes in the voice box of the rooster. And the voice box in the rooster is very, very deep. I contacted um, the Humane Society of the United States. They did not approve of either method. I reached out to three or four veterinarians in the area, one of them being Dr. Katz, who's on our board, uh, Dr. Carr, the, the avian exotic 
Care Clinic in Rockville, Dr. Gable, Avian Clinic, and um, Dr. Ike, who is out in Poolsville. None of these veterinarians knew anything about these collars, nor did they have any idea about the surgery. Dr. Gable did say, well, I'll look into it, and, and he, he did say it would, probably would be a costly surgery, though, probably three to $500. Unfortunately, if we do take roosters off of the prohibited list, we are going to need a means of uh, re remedies and sanctions if we do have crowing roosters because we, as I said, we will get complaints on the issue. I don't feel comfortable with either one of these methods being used as for, from an officer standpoint or from the Animal Control Board using one of these remedies that they could cause harm to the animal. So I think at this time, um, my recommendation is to keep the roosters on the prohibited list. Well, thank you for looking into it for us. Um, just to give the public some background on this, I, I guess it was four years ago when, when the topic came up? Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, it was, there were, uh, there was a house, I guess, in Pheasant Run that uh, had had some backyard chickens, yes. and one of the neighbors was upset about it and came and advocated to us to outlaw it. And there was a lot of impassioned testimony. Before that point, roosters and chicken and hens were 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 legal. There wasn't any sort of ban here. Um, and we went through the process, and we heard all kinds of testimony. And and the council, and I was sitting on the council at the time, and, and um, the council decided to not outlaw hens, but, but to outlaw roosters. Um, I was the lone dissent on that particular point, um, and my, my, uh, my reason for being in the dissent was less about any sort of direct experience with roosters myself. It was, it was more about, well, I didn't see that we had a problem with it, so why do we need to restrict people's freedom to have these, these animals? Uh, but that wasn't the, that, didn't, that point of view didn't carry the day, um, as happens sometimes when you're up here in a dais with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are where we are. Um, let me take this opportunity to ask the council if there's any interest in revisiting the rooster ban, mm -hmm. given Mr. Rosenzweig's uh, testimony. And I'll jump points. in first. Yes. And, and <clears throat> over the years, uh, we've had this uh, debate, and I go back to some experiences I've had a good number of arguments in neighborhoods are caused by chickens and roosters and so forth. And when we pass that, I mean, my, I'm speaking for myself personally, I compromise for the chickens, but I would not go for roosters. I have a good friend of mine who, when I lived in Omni, who lived next door to somebody uh, that had roosters and ended up in fisticuffs and in a major court battle. And I just, I'm not comfortable of bringing that to the constituents of Gaithersburg. We're a big city now. We're, you know, over 60,000 people in a major county of over a million people. And, and I compromise because there are some real good arguments for keeping some chickens. But the, the roosters, and I, I'm totally against all the things for muting uh, roosters. Uh, I read Lisa's report very carefully, and uh, I agree with her analysis and, and all the things she put in there. So... I just say we leave it like it is. Anyone else? I, I appreciate the, the work and research that Lisa's done, the interviews with the, with the, the veterinary professionals on this. Uh, I, too, agree that the, any methods they use to silence or to keep the roosters from crowing would be, you know, if the Humane Society uh, can't, uh, can't find a humane way to do it, then uh, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, can you tell us how many uh, residents actually have hens in the city? Do you, are you aware of the uh, count? I, I know we lost um, one of our coops. I probably would say we probably have four or five that we know of, and mm -hmm. things are working out fine. We, you know, we're not getting any odor complaints on them, and things are working out well. So the original complaint... Um, in this case, was uh, from a neighbor that protested, that complained about a rooster crowing, or just the fact that somebody might that the Rosenzweigs were keeping a rooster. Is that? I, I think the that they yeah. that they had their chicken coop in the front yard, and I think that's what 
they had a problem with. So there wasn't anything about any roosters crowing. No roosters were crowing. I think his hens got out and were on the sidewalk. So we were out there because his hens were at large. But our ordinance does have some pretty specific requirements about the coop location and yes. the size of the yard. And it's all met. And, <clears throat> yes, correct. So, uh, you know, I, I don't see any reason for us to change this. I don't see a, a clamor for it or a lot of clucking about it. Uh, I think so. <laughs> um, uh, and I don't, I don't see an outcry for uh, uh, roosters. I think that the residents that do have hens have been very happy with that, I, as far as I know. Yeah, the we have very few problems. Uh, you know, and the original dispute was really a uh, more of a neighbor dispute, and the hens were dragged into the the argument. I think as a way to get, you know, correct for one family to get to another. But I think that that we did the right thing at that point. So I don't see any reason to change it now. Anyone else? Yeah, um, I mean, I think it's important to remember that we had quite a bit of testimony on this topic when we looked at it in 2010. In fact, I think this topic had the most testimony of anything we've had since many of us were elected in 2007. <laughs> including um, the budget. Including the budget, <laughs> From all yes. over the county, actually. Yeah, including people. Yeah, people were interested in getting us to try and help the county address their issue as well. Um, and I think it's also important to remember that when we prohibit something, it doesn't say that no one could do that responsibly. It, we have to make a law that suits a wide range of people that live in the city. And, and the fact that, that one party could responsibly carry out something doesn't mean that everyone will. And we have to look at both of those when we decide. Um, we certainly have had complaints about roosters in the city, not from... Um, Mr. Rosenzweig's house, but other places in the city. Since we've passed it, um, roosters have been identified that were causing problems. Um, so it's clear that that does happen. Um, I think, obviously, uh, roosters and chickens and many other animals are allowed um, in the up county. They are not outlawed in the county as a whole, um, whether the city allows them or not. Um, it's just a question of what you do in um, uh, area that is primarily commercial and residential rather than more open land and so forth. Um, and I think what we have done has, has worked well. Um, I don't think that it is, I mean, I have a neighbor who has chickens and everybody thinks they're fine. Um, I, think, I think it's something that I mean, it's interesting that as an agri agricultural community in our history, we never had a ban where as many cities did, and so we weren't actually reversing a chicken ban uh, when we addressed it. Um, a lot of places are still deciding whether or not to even allow hens. So I think we're fine the way we yeah, are. We found out about Rockville the other night. <coughs> well, Rockville's re Rockville currently bans them and is reconsidering. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I guess we'll all, well, I mean, that's, that's, that's three right there, so I think that's pretty much, uh, that's, that's the issue. But I do want to just take a moment to, you know, thank Mr. Rosenzweig for his impassioned advocacy on behalf of something he obviously cares a lot about. That's what the democratic process is about, local government's about having the opportunity to come and, um, and state your case. Um, and I also want to thank staff for researching this, this issue. And I think that for folks on either side of the issue who want to make it, um, a very, a very simplistic argument, you're either sort of for it or you're against it, it's a lot more complicated and nuanced. There are these issues and, you know, there are people who could be opposed to allowing roosters because they actually fear harm to the roosters as, um, as staff has already explained about these concerns um, that might come along with uh, various types of treatments to try and quiet the roosters. So it is a complicated issue and um, the decision that was made four or five years ago was, was intended as a reasonable compromise. Um, as most of you know, um, we, had a, we had a temporary coop in my house over the summer. We had only hens, but it was a great experience for our family, um, educational and fun for our kids, and, and, uh, and we were able to enjoy fresh eggs, but we didn't need roosters to have that experience. And, uh, you know, it's tough because it, it can be argued that it's a little bit arbitrary to draw the line sort of wherever you pick to draw the line, but it has to be drawn somewhere. Um, and I think after all of the hundreds of people who testified back in 2010, 2011, um, and all the discussion and conversation we had, I think where we were coming out of that 
was that we felt we were being very progressive in trying to lead the way among um, cities and communities around America who had not quite yet embraced the idea of having hens in an urban environment and doing urban farming and all the environmental benefits and other benefits that come with it. So we were coming at it from a place of wanting to embrace that and be progressive. And so it's not as though we were coming at that um, a as a part of some effort to crack down on a problem. We were actually trying to um, expand um, uh, the efforts there, even though, as Kathy said, it was a little bit unusual because we didn't happen to have a chicken ban on the books at that point. So having said all that and having said that I appreciate the, the passionate advocacy, I think at this point I agree that uh, there just doesn't seem to be enough of a, um, a call or a need within the community to change the, the law at this point. If that changes, I'm certainly open-minded to, um, to having a debate in the future. Uh, but at this point, I, I tend to agree with everybody else. Yeah, I, I'm not going to use up much more time tonight. I, I basically uh, concur with with much of what's been said on the dais tonight. Um, th there just doesn't seem to be the, the great outcry from the community to overturn the ban. There seem to be a lot of perfectly good reasons why it's in place. And, um, you know, my position is to support the status quo as it stands. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lynn, do you have anything tonight?